and I'm getting the brunt of it. I got it. I think he had his arms open saying, I'm yelling at God, I'll never serve you a day of my life. I'm just yelling and screaming, I'll never serve you a day of my life. Ah. I think God's up there laughing, going, I know something you don't know. <laughs> do that, do that. I know something you don't know. Not only will you serve me one day of your life, but one day you'll serve me the rest of your life. Amen. Amen. He's a God that knows all. Amen. And he knows your pain, knows your hurt, and he knows that you're working through some things, hopefully out, not in. You ever had why questions? And they rob you and rob you and rob you. For nine years of my life, even when I was in Waterloo pastoring, I had this, why God, why, why my dad, why did he have to lie out in the QEW and basically bleed to death? Why, 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 why? And then, you know, get married, our first son dies, why, 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 why? Bury a little 60-year-old girl from the high school, why, why? Bury a little nine-hour-old baby, Heather, why, Lord, why, 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 why? I had all these why things. Why? You ever been there? Then finally, God spoke to me one day and said, Chuck, do you want to know why or do you want my presence? I go, that's it? Those are my options? Like, that's it? I remember lying on the floor in the front bedroom of the house going, that's it? That's my options? God says, yeah, that's it. Those are your options, son. Do you want my presence or do you want to know why? If you want to know why, I'll tell you why this, 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 this. I said to God, remember this, give me 24 hours. I don't know how you talk to God, but I, 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 I know I need time because I'm not the brightest bulb in the hallway. Right? So I need 24 hours. I'm thinking about it, praying about it. 24 hours later, I come in. I lay down the floor again. I said, God, I don't want to know why. I don't want to know why Dad died. I don't want to know Lisa, Heather, I, I don't want to know why. I, I want your presence. I need your presence because I hear his presence is fullness of joy. Yes. Fullness of joy. You want to know why, even though you're not supposed to ask why? I want you to hear this. It's so practical. It's not even spiritual, but it is. <laughs> because if I didn't like his answer, <coughs> okay, so God tells you why your dad died when you were, and why your husband, and why the marriage, and why your health, and why the business, and why, and so God tells you, and now you have all this information. Are you better or more bitter? <laughs> Here's the deal, gang. It's better to have transformation than information. Mm. And transformation doesn't come out of why. It comes out of will. Amen. Some of you this morning need to let go of the why questions. Why? You need to walk out in a few moments giving thanks instead of walking through the next week, the next month, the next year, as you have year after year, going, why my family? Why my marriage? Why my health? Why my business? Why my son? Why my grandbaby? Because there's no healing. Nine years I wasted heaven time, heaven's time asking God why, why? When there's no power in the why but the will. I believe this morning that God is working things out in our behalf. I believe that with all my heart. I really do. I really do. But somebody need to let go of that. I need to wrap up this morning. I'm only going to conclude once. <laughs> Sometimes I conclude three or four times just to irritate people. <laughs> I'll let your pastors do that. So. I just want you to understand this morning, church, that God has a written purpose in your life. I said it last night. I said it last night that God doesn't always work with power, but he always works with purpose. Sometimes he works with presence. In, in evangelical circles, especially Pentecostal circles, we love power. I love power. But if that's all I have, I'm dangerous. I'm dangerous. Usually power players spin out of control somewhere along the line. I've, I'm an old dog. I've been around third, fourth generation church dude. Other than the two-year sabbatical when I was running away. I gave up because I couldn't find any place where he wasn't. I gave it up. <laughs> God either works with power or he works with presence, but he always works with purpose. Jim, let's go Old Testament. We know Shadrach, Meshach, and a Winnebago. <laughs> right? My shack, your shack, and a bungalow. Right? We, know, we know those guys. Love story. Great story. VBS, Sunday school, great story. Fantastic. God shows up, fourth man on the fire. King Neb, brilliant the guy that he was, counted to three, struggled with four. I had to call his advisors and go, you can't with me. That's why I always say sin makes people stupid. You can't count to four, you know, you're messed up. Sin makes people stupid. I mean, come on, Samson. 
Like after the third time she asked, I would have caught on. <laughs> Daniel, you know, big old lion, look at his lips. Daniel's like, ain't happening. Ain't happening. You can lick all your lips you want. Deep fried, ain't happening. Deep fried. Why? Because you have a peace and a confidence. God's power. God's power. Then you move into Acts chapter 7. There's a young man by the name of Stephen. God's power. God's presence. The heavens open. Steve is having rocks pounded off his body. He's bleeding out. He's bleeding out for his faith. Couldn't God have stopped it? Okay. No, he's not. He didn't do it. But he didn't sit down that day, he stood. Something caught his attention. Remember the one who sits at the right hand of the Father? Mm -hmm. Not that day. Not that day. No, sir. He stood. He looked over the balconies of heaven. He watched a young man bleed out and lay down his life for what he believed in. Could Jesus have stopped it? Yes. Could the Father stop it? Yes. Holy Spirit? Yes, 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 yes. But he didn't do it. God's power was on hold until God's presence entered Stephen's life. He looked under the heavens and he saw what was taking place. I think from that moment on, he didn't feel one more rock. Mm -hmm. Didn't feel one more thing. Died in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why, why did Father do that? Why didn't he show up like with the power, the power, the power, the power, the power? Because there was another man in the crowd by the name of Saul. Mm -hmm. Oh, you may have heard about him. Wrote through the Holy Spirit pretty well, two-thirds of the New Testament. There was another man in the crowd that day that they laid down the bloody jacket of Stephen, laid it down at his feet. And God began to do a work in Saul's life that he might later have a Damascus Road experience and then go to Straight Street, then have an Ananias experience, then have a God experience. But God started that journey that day through his presence and his purpose, not his power. I want you to understand that, Mom. Because many times we pray for his power, and then you get mad after a while because you don't seem to be getting through. God's always there with presence, and he's always there with purpose. If he's not acting on your behalf like you thought he'd act, he's still God. He's still God. He's still very much God. He'll always come with purpose and presence, if not his power. Do you believe that this morning? I do. Come on. If, if you've lived some years on this planet, you know what I'm talking about. You want to give your whys to God today? You really want to give him thanks today? Then stop asking God why. And start giving him thanks. You know, you know why I say that? Because thanks is a defensive word. Mm. Thanks is an offensive word. Thanks. See, when the devil understands that you're willing to give the Father thanks for something that's happened, he backs off. He backs off. I'm not saying you're thanking him for, you're thanking him in. And so it's really an offensive weapon that I can be what God wants me to be because I'm willing to give him thanks in spite of how I feel, in spite of the circumstance, in spite of the hurt, the pain, and all the other adjectives and nouns we can come up with. I want to thank you this morning, Father. I want to thank you this morning that you laid down your son's life for me, that you delivered him. Here. Here's my son, Mike. And if you were the only one would have done this. I'm thanking God this morning that he's dealt with the issue of sin. That I can deal with the issue of sin. Could you imagine trying to deal with sin without Calvary? Well, you wouldn't be here this morning. I thank God this morning. He's working all things together for good. He is. Working them out. I thank God this morning that it's not election, predestination, those are boundaries. But it's grace. Grace, 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 grace. I thank God for that.